17th meeting of the Charter Review Committee. Uh, we have uh, all members present except uh, Robbie Sullivan and Councilor Bill White. Uh, City Attorney Alan Sewell will, will not be here tonight. Uh, first order is to approve minutes for September 3rd. I have some changes I want to add. Okay, let's let's get a uh, let's get a motion so, on the floor. Second. Okay, amendments, please. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I thought that we should acknowledge that we had letters from others, not so much the content. I don't know. Typically, if that happens in city meetings, if letters are attached, but I thought acknowledging that there was input, individuals though made an effort. Um, that was one. Thing that I got the should be added. Yes, I will take these one at a time. Uh, I agree with you, Patty, and I noticed that as well. My suggestion is that you uh, make a motion to amend the minutes under the uh, uh, under on page four, further discussion and vote under that section, and that we. Oh, yeah. Within the minutes yep. that I recorded that we had received email from Lisa Minnick, Rebecca Burek, Busanski, Molly Burnham, and Margie Riddle. And that those are part of the record, so if anybody wants to look at I think it was six letters. Uh, it was those oh. four plus uh, Lonnie Kaufman had sent a, a longer memo oh, we have as well. Oh, so just five letters. Okay. Yeah. I just remember reading that. Yes. Yes. Excellent. All right. I'd like to vote on these amendments one at a time. So, uh, do you want to move that? Yeah, I move to add um, notice of uh, letters that were submitted to the um, charter review committee. From those four. From those four individuals. So you've got all of them, right? Okay. <clears throat> For the discussion, favor. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Yes. Anything else? I have another one. Yes. No, go ahead. Go ahead. My other one, not to bring up, I'll add more um, to the discussion, but I, I felt that the, I brought up in the, in the animated discussion we had about the school committee and how they interact at bargaining. It was important to me to have in the minutes that I raised that there are schools that have families who are represented by multiple uh, or two or more um, school committee members. And I think Sam might want to add to that because you had a different, you know, you added to it to a different idea about it. But I just think that was relevant to the discussion and important to be in the minutes. Okay. Uh, would, you, um, would you like to propose a place to add that? Um, I think it would, well, I, I try, I, Trying to listen to figure out where things were, but the sound was off on our video last week. So I would say it was on page um, five, probably before Council Councilor Dwight stage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and would you put that before the motion? Yes, um, I would move to add that uh, Patty Healy um, uh, raised that schools are represented, schools and um, families are represented by more uh, than one uh, school committee representative. Yes, up to two or three. Second. Second. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? That any? Any opposed? I did all the No, I did. Any opposed? Okay. Does that take care of Yes, yeah. I was just trying to find where you want. I should have been hitting the club, you know, I don't know. <laughs> all right, Sam? I think. Um, I, I have to abstain on that vote. Just for the. On the vote you just took? Um, yes. Since I don't have no, I have no idea what it was, I'm just saying. Yes, uh, will you uh, get Bill driving after that vote happens? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, after the vote, you're right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, he, like after the second amendment? Yes, okay. he was not part of that. Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay.
Um, I have a few amendments to offer as well, um, especially because, as you know, the audio, you can't hear what folks are saying. Um, so on the first page, so page one, um, the paragraph that starts with Lonnie Kaufman, but the third sentence, um, I'm proposing an amendment to portray that he was reiterating a memo of the test. So I'm proposing this, the third sentence say, Mr. Kaufman gave an overview of this August 29th memo to the Charter Review Committee summarizing his portrayal of the major school committee functions, et cetera. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just wait for that. Okay. I have it in the name. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on that amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to stay abstain because I really am concerned that we didn't hear the audio of, uh, of what people said. <laughs> okay. I, did right. I tried to make listen to it. Okay. That vote was uh, <clears throat> seven in favor, one abstention. Okay. Well, I mean, I sort of feel that compels me to abstain as well. One, because I wasn't here for this part of it, and two, because there's no way okay. for me to, yeah. There are six in favor, two abstentions. Yeah. Um, the second amendment I have is on page three. Um, it's the third paragraph from the bottom that starts with Susan Boss stated she is only. Um, after that paragraph, I asked a question that was in response to something she said, so I'm proposing adding in what she said that I remember she said, and folks can obviously vote on it. Um, I'm proposing to add at the end of the paragraph, Susan Boss suggested a way to solve the issue could be for the school committee to ask the union not to bargain together. Is there a second? Second, I recall that. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. I'll oh, abstain. Abstain vote 602. But Sam, would you just say it again so I can remember? Yeah. Susan Boss, Susan Boss suggested a way to solve the issue could be for the school committee to ask the union not to bargain together. Okay. And my third and final amendment is on page four. <clears throat> In the final paragraph that starts with Sam Hopper disagrees with the idea, um, just adding Sam Hopper disagrees with the idea presented by school committee members that the budget isn't a bigger deal. Just to clarify what I'm referring to. Page, five, page, page four, four, final paragraph. Final paragraph. Okay, Sam Hopper, sorry about that. It's okay, no, I'll say it again. Um, Sam Hopper disagrees with the idea presented by school committee members that the budget isn't a bigger deal. Uh, is there a second for that? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Why is it on? I remember. Okay. I remember. All right. That is unanimous. Mm -hmm. No abstentions. Okay. Does anyone else have amendments to uh, September 3rd minutes? Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes as a whole? Of those five amendments. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. All right, public comments. Uh, I believe um, all three of you would like to speak, Brett. <coughs> Uh, my name is Fred Dimnock. I live in Ward 3B. Thanks for letting me speak at the recent meeting, which I guess was two meetings ago. I noted at that meeting that Mayor Executive Assistant Ann Lesko said that the Mayor's published proposed budget reports are similar to the bound annual reports and are at Forbes and Lilly Library. I read through all the newer published reports proposed budget report volumes, which have been published since 2000 to the present. They have the same style as the previous annual reports with budgets, 
and some reports from department heads. However, they are very loose on information about the city. And in fact, I think what happened is when they started to be published in 2000, the city, it looks like, purchased some software to do the budget. And attached to that software package was something for annual reports. And they started to use that to produce the proposed budgets by the mayor and tacked on to the bottom were reports from the department heads. In reading all those reports, it appears to me that the people writing those reports are directing the information to the mayor, telling the mayor, this is what we did, blah, 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 blah. There's very little information about the city itself. For example, crime reports, communicable diseases, fires, all the rest. They're very skimpy as far as I'm concerned. The early reports that were put out previously have far more non-financial information and statistical data about the city. These older reports give a wide and deep view of the workings of the city. It's amazing that they were produced in the age of fountain pens, typewriters, and carbon paper. I think it's important that the city, which is a $110 million organization, publish an annual report, or whatever you want to call it. The report should be in hard copy and available to the public at our libraries. Having these hard copies are not only make them more accessible to the public, but provide an easily accessible historical backup. Significantly, I note, in closing, that there were no published annual reports, proposed budget reports for the 10 years 1989 through 1999 at Forbes or Lilly Library. The fact was verified by an archivist and reference librarian at both libraries. So I still suggest that there may be, must be a requirement in the city charter for the city to produce a and published an annual report, or what is now called the proposed budget, that contains financial and annual reports by department heads addressed to the mayor. And in the case of public documents, they should also be addressed to the public and the taxpayer. I came to these meetings because of the invitation in the Gazette by City Councilor at Large, William Dwight, who asked for public participation. I now ask, how many people looked at the link that I gave you? Okay. Well, I hope you can give this issue some attention, but I suggest strongly that you look at that link because the information in there is far more detailed than what's available in our present annual or proposed budget reports. I think they're pretty skimpy. They can be better. Thanks for allowing me to speak. Thanks, Fred. Um, just uh, to uh, keep everyone um, up to date uh, with our uh, work, um, we will be discussing tonight the issue that you raised two, two meetings ago. And Annie, in fact, has for us uh, two of the old hard copies of the annual report from the years. Um, let's see. <laughs> 1979, 1925. 1925 and 1979. So we can actually look at those hard copies for them. Well, the link is 1978, I believe. Okay. So I've kept the whole thing, everything. Yeah. And you can page through and see what's there. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Hand I, I was just going to say, I think I tried to open that link at the, lot, at the uh, meeting. Because it was a little piece of paper, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's case sensitive. So, if it's um, a, like you have to put it I, for case and I, case 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 I tried it when I, I tried it when I made that link in it. I can resend it to you guys. Yeah, I because I, I remember that I tried to open the link and well, Annie opened it, right? Yeah, no, I can send it to she, everyone tomorrow. She opened it at the meeting. All right. And I apologize for that. I, yeah, I did try it here. And I will say that I didn't open the link because I work with the annual report. Well, you know all about it all the time. <laughs> Spend a lot of time working with the public. But 
just to put in one more person. But, but, but Annie could open it, so I don't understand why. I'm going to stand next to this podium because otherwise I look like the talking notes. Um, so um, I'm just here basically as Becca uh, to Fred. And what I want to say um, during the eight years that I was city councilor, if I had had real data of the kind that Fred has brought to our attention, I would have been a much better city councilor. Mm -hmm. But what happens is you get caught up in political things and proposals and so on without having a real basis of information. And so instead of having a sort of in-depth understanding of the city, you're always on the edge of having to relearn stuff and rediscover it. And you know, here's the other thing I would um, want to say about that. Most of our city councilors work for a living. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have the information available in some kind of convenient form, it's bloody hard to find it. Fred goes to the state and he comes up with some information about our city that's not otherwise available. Fred is a really good researcher and he's fantastic online. I'm pretty smart. I work at UMass, I teach, I do research, I've written books, but I happen to be dyslexic and I'm really rotten at um, online stuff. Um, I cannot come up with the kind of information that Fred has. And I bet there's a lot of just ordinary citizens um, in uh, Northampton who couldn't either. So I think this is really something that should be put into the charter. These reports, well, here's the other thing I want to say to you. Because I'm um, an employee of the state, I have to report back on what I do annually at UMass. It takes me about two days to do it. I know what it's like to write an annual report this thorough. But you know what? Our heads of department could do it in two days. So I think that I think this is something that would cost us a lot and that would really be very helpful. Thank you. Mike? Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> As an I was a city council once and it's true, you get caught up in you know, what particular power play happens to be happening tonight, and you don't get the big picture. So I think it's a good idea. Well, here's the question. So, are we, well, I'm not sure what to direct it to. I guess Bill's here, so maybe you can help us with that. All the budgets, you're saying that city budgets, what departments spend their money on, and how much, all the budget information, for example, in departments, is that one of the things? I, I just want to know what it is I can't find if I'm looking for it. That's the, what I want to know. The annual reports that I, the old okay. ones that yeah. are there, basically have financial information about what money was spent or what money will be mm -hmm. spent. Then the second part of those reports, and also the ones that the new ones that are out now also have reports from the departments. Yeah. For example, the police department in, in the old days, they had a list of all the crimes, rapes, mm -hmm. murders, robberies, domestic uh, abuse, and they had it all listed by sex and by age for kids and for grown-ups. So if I look at the reports now, we don't have any juvenile delinquents. We haven't had any since 1989. So wait, but, as a researcher, where would you, would you, where would you find that information? Is it stored? I assume that the, 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 the police department would have to send something to the state. But now how you get that, you know, I, I don't want to go to the state and start digging around on their website. Mm -hmm. It should be something that's readily available. And it was for a century. And even when I lived in East Stanton, uh, in the house there was always an annual report. And I suspect what happened was my father didn't have a checkbook. So when he went to pay the property tax, he went to the city, he pulled out the cash, and gave him the cash. And on the counter was probably an annual report. And in East Hampton, there were small paperbacks. They're probably 70 pages. So he'd pick it up, put it in his pocket, and bring it home, and it'd be laying around the house. So you can see them. 
and, and we always have them. And Northampton had it since for about 100 years. Mm -hmm. And something happened in 89, they disappeared. I don't know why. And there should have been a public report to the city for those 10 years. There wasn't. And probably because there's no requirement. Byzanti said, well, it's not the ordinances. We don't have to publish it. We didn't do it. I think it should go on the ordinance. And trying to find stuff on a web is not easy, believe me. Right. I spend a lot of time on a web. In fact, I spend so much time on a web, about every three months, Wiki sends me a, a, a letter saying we'd like some money. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Fred, you just said it should be an ordinance. Are you arguing? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, like I just mentioned, the reason why I'm here is because Bill suggested people come. Yeah, I'm asking you, do you think it's better handled in the charter? You have argued um, now for a couple of meetings that you'd like to see something in the charter, and that's what we're going to discuss tonight. Though you just raised the possibility of it being in order. Well, it's up to you. You're the expert. Can and I, I mean, I'm suggesting a charter. Let's go with that and see what happens. Can I speak yes, go ahead. Uh, well, go ahead. Actually, Marie, go ahead. Yeah. Well, the reason it's good to have it in the charter is so that a mayor can't say, forget it. We don't have the money this year. We don't have the staffing. We have to make this a priority. And I, it seems to me if we have solid information, not just financial estimates and hopes and all of that, but information about how our city is operating and how it's organized and what are the problems, um, I think we can have a much more involved populace and a much more informed um, set of elected officials. I don't know. I just don't see there's a downside. So you, you see more permits to it if it's in the charter. I'm sorry? You see more permits if it's in the charter. Yeah, it's guaranteed. Okay. Yeah. Bill? Uh, I'm sorry I missed the you spoke at previously, so I'm, I'm just catching up. But what, what is it you're looking for, Fred? Because, for instance, police statistics in this page is a daily list of every every transaction that the police have done. That's 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 wonderful. That shows you that the police is work the police are working. But like I pointed out at the last meeting, that's raw data. I I, I want to see finished polished data of There's still uh, data that's translated or, or take a look at I, I, I want to I want to see process data. That's process she's holding process data there. I mean, what happens is you're, that only tells me that the police department is operating. Are they catching anybody? Are they offering? Do they doing any citations? Uh, uh, did they find a murderer? Did, there's nothing there. That's not process data. It's raw data. And you really want process data. Data that's taken that data, process it, and, and tell me what happened for the year. Look at the book. And you get another one on that side of the table. Dylan's probably quite familiar with this. Yes. And Bill, may I just, what page are you on? Or what website? This is a city Northampton police department. This is the city Northampton police department. There is also, there is also a breakdown on the city police department. There is also a breakdown on, the data is also processed, but this is more granular. You can go even deeper to find each item. The same thing, open checkbook, for instance. Um, is that I, that's not what we're for. I'm just I mean, trying that, to, that's raw data it's I want to see process data at the end of the year you look at what happened and you process the data and here's a summary of what happened the financial report will be I mean the way it works my understanding is what happens is before the city publishes a budget they have to rectify the books and send a report to the DOR is that correct before they publish another budget it's an audit process. Right. And the audit process closes the books, compares what was spent for the, against the last ten years, right? Yeah. And then, and then, the various departments are required to submit information um, to the mayor that the mayor has requested. That goes into current budget. It's part of the annual budget process. Um. I, I was just looking for clarification. Are you wanting um, just hard copies of this to be available at the libraries? Or are you proposing extra copies are printed and we mail them? If they're fine, if they're in a library, that's fine for me. 
They should be there at the very least. I, I don't have, I don't care where they're available, but I just think, you know, it should be available somehow to the public. The library is a good, good place to do it. Um, if it can be online in a very simple fashion, people can print it, they can call it up and print it. Um, probably some of this data should be available to city councilors regularly. And if the city councilors have the data and a constituent says, so how many kids are at Bridge Street School? They, you know, are um, you know, X, Y, and Z questions. At least the city councilor will have a book and can say, here it is. Is there any data bill that you were mentioned in the you don't do do you have access to, I believe that I, I mean, so far what I've heard that, that I have access to that information and it's not, it's, it's not all that challenging. It's actually no more challenging than when you know councilors actually in some sense. The, we, we never had it in the eight years that I was on the city council. Do you mean to tell me you can go to any page in that book and find that inf information for this year, for 2020? There's a little open checkbook here. Right here, it's does the data right. link, excuse me for a second, does the processing that you explained, first of all, does a, it does graphical um, distribution, but at the same time, it does the raw data is also available. The, and, and then also in the budgets, of course, and I think at least what I heard was that your concern was the, the narratives that are being given by the department heads in the, in the, in the budget aren't um, detailed enough. That's right. I mean, the financial report and the new reports and the old reports are very good. They're better in a newer report because they're being done by a computer, but the reports from the department have, they're very thin. Uh, very, very thin. But of course, in, 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 to some extent, we have an advantage in that one. We and um, Mike and Maria will call this, recall this, and when we do budget hearings, you know, we choose the major departments have the department heads come in and expand on that. No, I, I, I'm not, not offering that as an alternative. What I'm saying this is what, what that we do have access to the information. There is, uh, uh, if you'll recall, Chief Sinkwitz used to give us a very detailed uh, distilled analysis of crimes and crime trends. Uh, the, uh, Chief Casper does the same thing. Uh, the department, the DPW, uh, the, the department head also does the same thing. Gives us, you know, is there also a written report? From that, there yes. From that, we can we can also get a written report. So no, I'm not I'm not I'm not debating you. I'm just describing to you what's available to us in that that word. I I will also add something that you probably have not thought about, and that is. When you look at any of the numbers in that book, let's say, for example, you pick up 1925 yeah. and it says there are 13 murders. That's only one number. That really doesn't have meaning until you can compare it to other years, right. either past years or future years. So what you get from the oral report at the city is only a snapshot of the current year. It doesn't tell you what happened in the past. Can I make a comment too? Mm -hmm. Yes, make one final comment and then you'll... You've yeah. got to go on. Sure. Um, but, Bill, um, it's nice that the city council gets that information. I'm not hearing, and I've never heard, of a mechanism for distributing it to um, citizens who are interested in those questions. So I think the point about having something in the charter is to make it public and accessible. And, and regular. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm not really clear on what what it is precisely you want from this report. Is there Fred saying he wants basically some uh, expression of trends or comparative trends um, on uh, uh, you know enterprise funds used for, for stormwater management, say, or um, the police department crime trends? Or fire, um, fire trends, etc. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So, 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 uh, you want 
department heads or some other agency to historically go back and make comparative trends? For one year. No, no. No, for one year. Just reproduce those books. Yeah, exactly. Well, but you, Fred, you just pointed out this is just raw data this, as well. This just says 13 MERS. It doesn't tell you. Well, no, no. It, that's process data. That's process data. Okay. Let's I mean, go on with the meeting. Yeah. You've got work to do. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll talk. Uh, well, we've heard, we've heard from you, and I think we, we understand the, the, the concern that you're raising is the, the availability of, of, of certain data that you feel has been, uh, it's, it's, since 1989, has been uh, inconsistently made available. There's no uh, particular uh, structure in place to require department heads to to do certain things in their report. Okay, okay. So I'm going to be flexible here. Since we've got three interested people, I'm going to move down to item six on the agenda. And, and the discussion that we need to have as a body is: Is this an appropriate uh, 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 measure for to include in? The charter should the charter specify that there be a particular content or format of department and annual reports? Thank you, Bill. Um, I don't have an objection to that because actually that does qualify. I mean, some of the things that we've looked into putting into the charter have been um, not something you would necessarily want to memorialize in a way like that. That was it was, it was more. Policy issue. This is less a policy issue. It's a request by the public for a a, a comprehensive accounting. The question, my concern, however, is if we require this, we don't know. So far, I haven't heard a very clear description of what a comprehensive reporting is, unless you're asking us to directly mimic the process here embedded here. Um, so I, I'm a little uncomfortable making a rule about something that is a little out of our depth as to what, for instance, what the state requires, what the state would mandate under mass general law. Um, I, I agree with uh, petitioners that um, the more information available to the public is a better thing, and the more information that's obviously available to the public would also consequently be available to counselors, presumably. But if we're going to embed it in the charter, we have to have a better idea what the hell that's supposed to look like. I basically tentatively heard three different descriptions of what that would be. And, I, and so that would require some more massaging and a more expensive discussion before we create it as an item of the charter because the thing about the charter that makes us loath to put these things in is it's memorialized in a way that's more that has more permanence, which I think is uh, Council Tomasso's argument is that you want to give it that kind of that level of stability that so it's not it can't be circumvented by a policy maker like a mayor um, or or a council for that matter. I would just I would feel more comfortable as I said that if we had a better notion of if we're going to put this in. Because you can put an annual, you can say we'll require an annual report, and that could be anything. Here's, you know, as as Councilor Tomasco will tell you, if you give an assignment for someone to write a paper about something, the the variable that you could get are wide open. You could get something that somebody just sort of blathers on, or like I'm doing now, or something that has a certain expectations. Yeah. Sam? Um, in my experience, I've been able to find a lot of this information either by asking or looking, but I agree that taking one less step out and compiling data that's already available would be handy. I also agree with those, like I would like to have something more solid. I do feel it could be appropriate in the charter based off of um, the budget section just similar things of how each year we have to have these budget presentations. Um, but would like to know a couple of things first, like what a clear proposal is, what this is gonna look like, 
without being over prescriptive, um, mm -hmm. since this is going to be in the charter for another 10 years at least, um, as well as what, like what's doable for the city, you know, like, you know, can we, if we're printing all of these false citizens or whatever, I just would like to know what's usable, what the cost is. I don't think it would be that much either, but I also don't want to act like I know mm -hmm. how much it costs. Okay. Well, well, I, I agree. I don't know how it would be put together, but I have to say, looking through this, um, oh, so from 1979, I think part of what I see in these reports is the history mm -hmm. of the city. Um, it's a history that anyone can access um, and use when sort of creating a new way of thinking about the city or a history of why things happened historically in the city and why we've come to this point that we need to have certain discussions. I mean, it's it almost, some of this is a, a report by someone who condensed lots of things that happened in a school and said, oh, we had a playground and we did this, we did that. And I am less inclined to have that kind of report because it's that sort of descriptive because it can, it's, it's subjective. But there is historical information, I think, that is useful. Can, can I access it easily? I, I, I haven't tried to before, so I haven't had a reason to. Um, but it's, it's kind of fascinating to look at if you were a historian. <laughs> and, um, you know, the city auditor's report, and what, what kinds of things happened in 1979, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Right? But, I don't know what the need would be for the city council. I guess there could be a need at times. I, I think it would be interesting for students and uh, you know for our citizens who have an interest in it. Um, it doesn't look like something that would take time to cope to sort of call it put together unless you follow a format um, and then pulled in all the information. Um, I mean, it's to me it was fascinating to look at like the Board of Health, what they were just looking at in 1979, and who the every it has every single mayor that who ever existed here, and when they were born and died. I don't know. Do I need that? Maybe not. But I I like reading about the history. So I I don't know. If, I don't know. I've never looked at it. So. <laughs> Yeah, I will say we, we do use them a lot. The, both the narratives and the data are frequently used. They're an incredibly rich historical resources because our printed ones end in 1989 and because I work in the local history department, we tend to focus more on the older things. I don't access the data online as much. Um, but I will say from a history perspective, the city does a great job of archiving documents, but the web by its very nature is very ephemeral. So having anything printed to back up what can be easily changed online. Um, I mean, we do web archiving now, but even if it's just one copy in a library, it's an incredibly rich resource and could be used for all sorts of holding people to account. And you know, we use it to date buildings, we use it um, for crime statistics, we use it for a lot of different Researchers, students, um, just interested public. You know. So, I think that there's a lot of a wealth of information that we do need to recapture. I don't think we need to go back. I think it's, it's all, perhaps the availability of this data online could make it easier to put these things together. Um, I will say that they change quite a bit over time. The 1885 ones are very different than the 1979 ones. So there's no one model to match it to, which makes it our job if we're dictating the city needs to do this. Again, it's even grayer for what exactly it is. Okay. Um, Molly? Not much more to add than what others have said, but I see this as an issue of access and transparency. And on the one hand, this is a format that seems to work for people 
and the online format, for whatever reason, is not for some people. Um, and I'd be curious to do almost a side-by-side -side comparison to see exactly how information is different um, and how information is parsed differently mm -hmm. in this format versus how information is parsed in the web format. Um, and, and like others have said, don't know exactly what to recommend. Um, but I, do, I also find this kind of information interesting and useful and would be more likely to read it in this format um, if it were available. And I wonder, you know, I suspect others would as well. Okay. Well, again, I, you know, I, I reiterate what I said last time, and that's that I truly believe that the information that's been spoken of and asked about is available. Certainly, you know, where I worked, um, there was a monthly meeting with the executive staff, and then had the fire people, had the school people, had the public work people, and had the um, police folks. And there were trend information presented monthly on current activity. So um, the stuff's there. If, if I mean, I don't know what to be more concerned about. If a, if a counselor feels that. Um, he's being required to make a decision without adequate information, and that's, that's one problem. Um, if a counselor is hearing from constituents that information that they need is not available, that's another problem. If, if researchers can't find access to historical information, you know, that may be the third problem. But, um, <coughs> You know, certainly between a lot of the a lot of the things we talked about here have to do with legislative authority and executive authority. Myself, I'm I'm really disinclined to try to uh, put constraints on executive authority in in the charter. I mean, that that should be in ordinances. That should be in in um, the, the the guidelines as to how budgets are done, how departments report, how public gets that information. So I'm less inclined to think that this is a charter issue. I rather think it's more of an administrative issue. Um, but I do happen to believe that all the stuff that I've heard you ask for has got to be around somewhere. Every By October, school departments have to submit to the state what enrollment is at all the various schools. Um, you know, the police departments submit quarterly to the FBI on crime trends. The fire department uh, does the same sort of thing. So a lot of a lot of the information that, that you've been asking about is got to be is got to be around. It's just how to access it. I am. I did go online for the city budget, and I do agree with you that the information that's presented online in support of the departmental budgets is very thin with regard to performance. I'm with you there. Um, however, I know well what Councilor Dwight is saying is that when department heads are required to testify, they go deep on what on what the trend is, on what the performance is, and on what they project to do in the next year. So I know the information's there. I think it ought to be better presented in the budget document, which, which is the lasting you know, memorial to an annual budget. Myself, you know, I did a lot of work in the in the CAFA, which is the statements, and that's ten years worth of, worth of information. So, again, um, I hear you. I believe the information is there. I think the councilors need to to get the mayor to present it in such a way that's accessible to the public. That's what I think. Bill. Um, we also do require in the charter, for instance, um, that uh, independent audit be conducted by annually. That's in the charter. It's also a mass general law, of course, and we're being redundant with mass general law in that respect. But that's that's kind of vestigial from from the old charter. The thing 
obviously there's a difference between this and what's available online. One of the things is if we published what we do now have online, the data that we um, process, this book would be a bad thing. We have more exhaustive data access and distillation of that, that data than we did four years ago, than we did certainly eight, ten years ago when you and I showed together. Um, and, and that probably is going to expand exponentially as well. Some, some that's required by state law, more detailed information that's required by state law that's law that's since passed in, in recent years. The in for better or for worse, the principal access point for the public and for anybody else is through the internet. And I I am bear with me, I'm sympathetic to um, the, the concern that you're expressing that, that the access is more difficult, it's more complicated. And in some cases, because the obfuscation comes from the fact that it's there's so much that you don't know where to start, where to begin, and where to approach, or even where to look. And I, I think one of the things that might address some of the stuff that you're talking about is one simple access point for municipal data and data analysis. The you know so for instance when I'm looking the way I look is when I go on the city website and just type in a search word in the search window which is an algorithm that basically is going to give me hits more on the principal word I use so I have to use the right word when you do a search <laughs> much much I rolling from Fred and I sympathize the fact that I do have the benefit of knowing which keywords to search for. Um, I can give you right now, I can give you the art reports um, going all the way back to 2004, the exhaustive audit reports all the way to the current ones. Um, and that's all available through the city website. Police data analysis and reports actually to the uh, city website to the police. Schools, as as uh, Bob talked about, because there is mandatory reporting that goes beyond even what you know. Everything from expenses applied to uh, 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 you know uh, teacher aides, how much education they get, um, you know how we do meal plans, so on and so forth. All that's there. There is the exception, of course. The one thing I did notice in this book does tend to do is actually name certain people that probably would not be named that uh, just for privacy protection issues. Um, this is also, yeah, so as Patty points out, line. Yeah. yeah, and and as Patty points out, these are subjective. Um, you see opinions embedded in these things that, and obviously, you can force an opinion by manipulating statistics as well. But in these things, in the narratives, there's opinions, there's, there's cultural um, um, attitudes that are certainly different than cultural attitudes today. So it'd be different than this. But I think if, if we had uh, a, a single access point that, to Maria's point, that basically breaks down in fairly simple terms, not much different than what we see, um, in the contents or the indexes of these things. Um, it might be easier to access the information and thereby be more effective as public information. As Bob said, this stuff exists all over the place. It is there, but it's worthless if it's not accessible, and it's worthless if it isn't, if, 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 it's, if it's just numbers that gobble there, right? Yes, it's, it's worthless, but the bill doesn't have the proper time. Right, exactly. Well, can I, can I just, uh, can we hear from the board before we go back to the public? Uh, I wanted to ask Dylan, as a professional researcher, is there a, a loss to you professionally in not having the, the printed annual reports post-1989? There doesn't have to be. I mean, if you could find the thing, we have very talented reference staff. I don't work at the reference desk, I work in other departments, but who have a lot of trouble finding city information on the website. Um, and these are people who look for information on a variety of databases. 
um, if they're having trouble finding the information, <coughs> then the public that we're helping are not going to be finding out on their own, you know, for the most part. So I think with a structure like that, where it was, it was an entry point um, that was more simply broken down, it could be more useful. I don't think it has to be printed, but I think something structured like that. And again, it also doesn't have to be all the data, because that's just going to overwhelm people. Um, it's useful for a lot of purposes, but this is very simple. I mean, surely there were a lot more things going on in 1925 than in that book. Um, it's very watered down, but it's also easy to get at. And, you know, so I don't think it has to be printed. I just think it has to be readily available. And once in a while. No. I just hear this as a question of how I feel that we can't come to a conclusion around whether or not the content actually exists, the what, so to speak, because folks are struggling to sort of find uh, the information out through the how. So it would be good um, to discuss, I think, as a group, whether there is something that can be done within the charter to address the how piece at the least. Me, but um, yes, what I just proposed to what Dylan described um, is something that would be more appropriate to take up with our web design company, which is called Civic Plus, and talk about we're talking about a structural change that I wouldn't put in the chart because that <laughs> the, the structural change change in websites is going to change in a month. And to put anything like that in the charter would be foolish. It would not. It wouldn't serve any purpose. But the fact that, and I, and I know I've seen Lynn's taking notes here, and it's and it is. I mean, we do have communication with the web developers. They do a lot of municipal websites. We don't want to time one reward for the best ones. <laughs> but um, so this is not a website that we built that we did build in conjunction with them, but this is basically a template. And uh, the company tries to address uh, concerns from uh, the, the various, you know, the vendor responds sometimes well, sometimes not so well to uh, suggestions, recommendations, or concerns, or problems, and troubleshooting. That sounds more like that's something that we should recommend and see how it goes, but that, I mean, as I said, it would be very uncomfortable for you. I would like that in the chart. In, in regard to specifically to, to web based. Yeah, uh, I mean, how people would access the oil. information. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's something more generic to the, to the tune of uh, the public data should be made ex as accessible and as easily accessible to the public. And, you know, something vague like that. So, you know, I, re I reflect and I recall that one of the first speakers to, to come to us when we started was Councilor Klein, and, and she had many of the same issues that, that you have, um, expressed differently and, 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 and what all, but throughout the course of our work, there's been more than one time where it has been apparent that people are not getting information that they, that they feel they need. Um, you know, we talk, we, more than once, we've had discussions about ombuds people, you know, and that function, and where that function could sit, and how that function could work. Um, I sort of, I had argued against that, because I've seen an ombudsman fail more than I've seen him succeed, but uh, I'm sort of a, of a notion now that, that, you know, given the fact that so many people have, have felt a frustration and they're not getting stuff that they, they believe they need, given the reality that we're going to get a whole bunch of new legislative representatives of the, of the voters here to start next year, you know, it seems to me that the city does need to be attentive to some kind of information dissemination process, whether it's an info officer or a staff person to the mayor who can interact with the council and, and in specific 
direct people to where um, this information reposes. And if it's not processed or presented in a format that's meaningful to you, that, that person might be able to help. Um, I do have to say, uh, you know, I, I am concerned that the departments are not overstaffed here. And, and to impose upon them a requirement to respond ad hoc to um, questions that may, may come to them um, would be burdensome and, and difficult. Um, so whether it's an ombuds person or an information officer or, or something, it, it would seem apparent from what you've said to us now on a couple of occasions and what we've heard throughout our deliberations that the city could be a little more attentive to how information gets out to people. So Bob, you're, you're suggesting the it may be solved through a better distribution. I think so. I, I think it's the it's an executive's responsibility, and I think it's the legislative branch's requirement to make requests on behalf of their constituents if information is needed. I think, you know, of all the things that you've said now to us twice, I think the thing that's most concerning is your comments that let that counselors feel they're required to make decisions without proper information. If I was a counselor, I wouldn't do that. Bill? Um, that, I present to you that officer. <laughs> okay. And at that point, in fact, is actually what the Lynn and Lynn and to some extent Annie as well, that's what they do. They receive phone calls. Now, unfortunately, uh, when Maria and I were both counselors, uh, the once upon a time, the city clerk's office was essentially the central point because it was the closest office that people would bump into when they would walk into City Hall to come yell at City Hall. The, the clerk was the first person they would come and yell or ask something. Uh, and they were the information processing or the referral uh, the agency that would send you off to whomever to speak and notify them. That, um, Lynn's job. Well, I'm not going to over describe Lynn's job. Lynn can speak more to it better than that than I can. But that's what Lynn's job is. When someone calls the mayor's office with a question about anything, particularly where the data systems that are available, she has, she has quick access or knows the best route. And I would recommend that to uh, your researchers. That would be your first stop would be here right, when trying to find that particular data. Um, that, I would not embed that position in the charter, though, because the mayoral assistant depends on the mayor, actually. Uh, in the, the, uh, mayor Higgins didn't have a mayoral assistant. Um, she, she had a number of other. Uh, Mary Ford had Mike Vito. Uh, but the, yeah. I mean, what can we? Okay. Uh, uh, can I well, well, no. I, I'd like to hear from Lynn if Lynn has anything she wants to add to what Bill just said. Um, well, I'm taking this all in because um, I'm spinning on how we can take this and take this and that and everything that's out there for data and pull it into some format that's going to tick most of these boxes because. The reality is, I know the book might be nice for some people, but most of what we encounter now, people don't want this book. They like, can't get to the library because they work, or they want it when they want it at two in the morning on their phone, or you know while they're getting their kids off to school, like getting you know on their laptop or something. So I'm struggling with that. I'm also struggling with the costs associated, and each department depending on the data, is inputting it into a different type of system and how we pull all that together. And then I'm, I'm coming back to this is interesting and it's fascinating, but what's the return on the amount of staff time and money spent to gather that? Um, I don't have an answer to any of this right now. There is software that exists, we have looked at it, where you could generate your own report, you can drill down as far as you want and generate a report, it is very costly. So it's a matter of what what we want to do, I guess, and, and what we're trying to do. Um, 
and then I'm still not really hearing that there's a consensus on what we want for information, which is why I kind of go back to the online tool where that user can go and select it specifically, what pertains to them. And I want to know how many measles cases there were this year, where you know my neighbor next door might not care about that, and maybe she cares about you know X, Y, or Z. So kind of <coughs> coming back to the more of an online tool where you can select what you want information on. Um, and then with what Dylan said about researchers, um, reference staff, I would I I think I'd want to know what they can't find so that we could figure out is there a hole somewhere that we need to plug um, because we like getting feedback on the website and figuring out what we can change. Generally, the only feedback I get is from um, some proprietary system that wants to be listed there as a reference for new incoming residents. Don't allow, but then it makes me realize that people are actually looking at our site and what do they want to see? What do they need? Um, can we run um, uh, hit reports to figure out what our top pages are? And that blew my mind. The top page hit last year was for the Easter egg hunt at <laughs> Wood Park, um, and then it was the assessor's database for property values and then the recycling center information. So nothing that I would have thought. You know, spend all this time and energy on web pages and you get a few hits. So anyway, yeah, I don't really have much to offer other than just taking this all in and I don't have an answer right now. Um, but I, if for just for your own purposes, we print 20 copies of the budget book and it's $1,200. For the total? All right, uh, Molly and then Bob. I, I wanted to give an opportunity for these folks to be able to respond to some of this because we've been talking quite a bit and I don't know if you have. I can have several comments. Can well, okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, Maria, you, you had yeah, your hand. Um, it seems to me that something appropriate in the charter should include a few major points, namely, the information should be accessible to the public in one place. Mm -hmm. And that makes access easy, and it gives the historical uh, record. The mayor should not have the ability to simply cancel these things, mm -hmm. which is what happened. Um, I think it's important to have it in a written state as well as um, uh, an online state, and if you have the written documents, it's easy to put them online. But um, it's not so easy, if you're not good at online stuff, to find it um, for people who need it in writing. And for, you know, I'm speaking from the point of view of an educated person who is nonetheless recognized by the state as having a disability pertaining to dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So you can find this stuff online, Bill. Well, I I'm can't. Dyslexic. I'm sorry? I'm dyslexic. I'm okay. profoundly okay. dyslexic. Well, well, you're dyslexic. 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 You can. It doesn't stop you doing online stuff. It does for me. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be some general principle of open access mm -hmm. for everybody and in one place. Mm -hmm. And another thing that was put out as an objective is that these reports are opinions. Well, yes, it's not just data that we need, but we need some supervisory intelligence who says, this is what seems important this year. And as for being opinion, that's what we hire people to do who are managers of our different, um, our different units and departments. It's their opinion about what's important that they then try to implement and convince other people about and so on and so forth. So it doesn't seem to me that the job of the charter statement is to micromanage those elements, but to have some statement saying that we, we think there should be an annual report. It should have these characteristics. And, um, and then let the council and the mayor figure out a way to implement it. But the mayor should not have the ability to cancel it. 
Okay, accessibility from one place, written and not at will of the mayor. Yeah, and, and it can be. Fred? Yeah, I'd like, like to make a couple comments. Uh, basically, I'd like to uh, talk about what Bill said about the website. And I've used that search engine a number of times, and it really doesn't work for me. If you know the keywords, you probably can get in there and find it really quickly. But I've, I found bugs in the search engine. I talked to the systems people about it, and they know it's there, and that's that. The second thing is that the website changes. Every two or three years, I go to the website, I'm looking for information. I go to the city website, it's a brand new website. They change the damn thing. It's different. I gotta start all over again. There's another learning curve that I have to do to find it. You're using the system constantly every day. You may talk to the developers, it works for you. The other thing about the search engine and what they do on even Google is you need a little health thing that tells you what, how to use the search engine. Are there wild cards? Can you use Boolean algebra? Can you use quotes in the search engine? That's all missing. So using that website is really difficult. It's not very easy. It's easy for you if you're using it every day, or you've used it for 10 years, fine. But otherwise, not really. I certainly couldn't go back and find school data from five or 10 years ago to compare it to what it is now. Um, the other thing that you missed, Bill, was the fact that from 89 to 2000, there were no reports. There was nothing. I went to the library, I checked with, uh, not at least, but uh, anyway, I checked at both libraries, Lily and, and, Florin, and, Lily and Forbes, <laughs> There's nothing from 89 to 2000. It's completely missing. Uh, I didn't want to come here to the charter to talk about this. It's been an issue that's bothered me for probably 10 or 15 years. I was going to bring it up at the city council, but with three minutes, Bill's going to give me the hook. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I mean, in the past, you would have given me the hook, and I would have lived. All right, what, what's the issue? Well, the issue is I don't think the web is going to be sufficient. Oh, it's, okay. it's the issue really is difficult. Been and, and the other thing is that uh, you've got to put something in there that says the annual report has to be done every year. Yeah. It was missed from 89 yeah. to 2000. There was nothing. We had nothing. As far as the comment on a health issue, all the health department publishes its statistics with the state. So I can go to the state and I can find out how many measles cases we had, blah, 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 all that. But it should be in one place. It should be for this city here. I should have to go to the state to find out what happened. Same thing with only recently there's been the opioid deaths put on the, the, the uh, police department webpage. I shouldn't have to go to the state to find out what's happening with the opioid crisis. Okay, I think, I think, Fred, we've heard your reports now. Okay. okay. Um, Can you do me a favor, Stan, and Mark, just reflect back, and I've forgotten your name, I'm sorry. I'm Maria. sorry, Maria. Mar Maria, the, the three or four points that Maria made, the accessibility, that the mayor couldn't cancel it. Accessibility um, in, in writing. Accessibility in, in writing place, in one place. And not at the will of the mayor. And not at the will of the mayor. And so the follow-up I would just want to ask Maria is how can I, can this body be helpful in terms of addressing what the content should be? I, it, it doesn't seem, it seems to me that to some extent, that's the, um, that's the area where we have to trust our department heads. Mm -hmm. They will know what's relevant. And maybe that's the word you need, the relevant information annually, or the most important. You can figure out some very, Open terms like that that specify that it's their duty to do that. And, you know, they're mostly doing that anyway. They're doing it verbally. They're telling it to the mayor privately. They're discussing it in their own meetings. They've got all those data. Um, and it's just a question of somehow giving public access to the voters, to the citizens, more information and having it be reliably accessible. That's what a democracy is, right? 
Bob, you wanted to respond to something that Bill said. Well, what I wanted to, you know, comment on is, you know, Bill's, Bill's talking about what the chief of staff has to do. I, you know, I, he knows far better than I. To me, the chief of staff is the yeah. most important position in the city. And um, I, I think responding to what I'm hearing tonight is not a chief of staff function. It's more of an information office function or an mm -hmm. ombuds function. Um, but with all of this, you know, I I believe that the remedy is in the administrative code. I wish I wish Alan were here because I would like to, you know, I think that's where any request of the executive to provide information either in a budget form or an annual report has got to go there. I don't see that as a charter issue, and I, and I would I would really like to hear the city attorney. Okay. Um, uh, to that point. Yes, Bob. Uh, annual reports are required by state law. Every municipality, every town has to present an annual report. Now, they don't go to grants. It's essentially a budget. Um, they're, they're, you know, it's up to each community. As Maria said, that there's a sort of discretionary point to it, how detailed that is. Um, and and so to the extent of embedding that in the charter would be redundant. It's the same that the requirement of an annual report is already mandated by general law. It's the same thing I think it's redundant to say that we have to do an independent audit. That's also law. To put in the charter is somewhat redundant. To Bob's point, I think he's right. That's, that's an administrative order, essentially. The problem is this doesn't address the concern that Maria's mentioned, which is the, the mayor at any time can just sort of say, I don't want to do it that deep. I don't want to do it this way. And, and thereby you sort of identify the the issue that we have depending on depending on who whomever is sitting in office. In this case, I mean, we now actually have I have access to so much more information than I did when I was first serving. And, and in fact, at some points, I think this goes to your concerns. It's like or fire mode, just too much information in some cases. It doesn't necessarily, I have often used the analogy that you can dissect a frog and figure out what its constituent parts are. If you keep dissecting it smaller and smaller, you get a green slime that doesn't tell you anything. Because it's, it's at that point you've just sort of overdosed and don't have any perspective on information. What I heard you both saying was someone of, of some stature and analytical skills or someone or some ones to digest this, pre-digest this for public consumption so that it's more accessible and understandable. Um, and that, to that point, that actually is a whole different person or department that we certainly wouldn't put in the chart, we wouldn't dictate that, that the, administ the administration would have to create a department or a specified department. We don't do that in any other context. We don't mandate a particular job or position. So I think the best approach now in the, in the course of this debate is not to embed it in the charter, but in point fact to continue to lobby for, and you have people of goodwill um, willing to try and create a better better process by which it works. Because I, I do also share your frustrations as well. I'm a student, and it's, I, um, but as I said, at the same time, this wasn't the information that wasn't available to me in many places. Put it in the charter, and you won't have to lobby for anything. If we put it in the charter, we can't, we can't specify what it is. We're, we can't specify how it shall be done. We can't specify. Who's the we? We, the public who puts this in the charter, can't, there's no, there, you, what you're describing is so amorphous, it's difficult to embed in, 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 a, in, a, in a, in a sense of the city's constitution beyond what state law already requires. The, the, I mean, you're asking for, you're saying, reasserting, saying, we need to have an annual report. Yes, we're required to by law. 
and so we don't need to put that in the chart. But what you're asking but for is a typo. But it's not in the it's, it's, But that's it's, it's, it, and that's the thing is that in a place, it is in a place. It's just not in a place. It's not like this. And you're right. And it isn't in one place on the internet. But, and that's something we can work on to some degree, at least make it more accessible. But I wouldn't, I don't, you can't put it in the charter like it must be in one place. I don't know what that place would be. Would it be the internet? Would it be a desk? Would it be a book at the library? That's the concern. And if that's what you're asking for a printed document, as I said, it wouldn't be this. Not even plus. It would be substantially different. And, um, and, but that, I wouldn't rule it out, but I wouldn't put it in the charter either, that we have to publish the book. Bill, is there any way the Charter Review Committee can be helpful when it comes to the request for accessibility and transparency here? In what way could we be helpful? I don't know how, I don't know how you mandate because essentially, for instance, the state, in the state constitution, transparency is not an issue that's there. That's created by law and legislative orders. And, and ordinance. That's, those are laws, and that's the same thing. The council could, could create an ordinance, for instance, um, once we had a better idea, but we could create an ordinance that was, uh, you know, this goes back to another issue we talked about recently, but that it would be an ordinance that would dictate this. So it would be a, a, memorialized as a law, not as essentially as our, our constitutional document. And patio. Yeah. Patio. It's state, it is state law that information be available and transparent, but it's not. That's what Florence B. Copot's biggest beefs was in the motion for years and years. It's very, information is not accessible from the state about from many, many agencies and from the federal government. And uh, it's just not there. Public information. You can't get it, you get paid for it. Um, so that's one thing. But I appreciate. You know that you, you know what you're saying. It should be it should be part of a democracy, and it's there's a law that says so. But in fact, it's not always there. And I, I'm actually leaning. I know I feel like I'm always on the other side of the, everybody, but I I am leaning toward this because I feel I'm thinking that historical information may be lost. That's one reason why I'm in favor of it. I, I understand that this is probably not the interest of this charter committee because there's not a concrete way to build this into the charter at this point. But my other concern is that um, even when we had that discussion about strong mayor, weak city council, that we had something so valuable to the city that you were explaining how valuable it is to many people to use it and the mayor could just get rid of it like that and the city council could <coughs> believe in its value but not bring it back and that's that's like the other that, that's why I'm leaning in favor of the argument that Maria that they have made to have something in the charter that states that there is an ex accessible method of um, cataloging, cataloging information um, in a way to do it. And um, I'm not sure we'll ever know how to say it. But I think their pain points were made. And um, I think, um, you know, I think the charter might be the only way to do it when we have this kind of governance. Uh, I accept. I accept your that argument, Patty. The the other side of the equation, though, is if if the the, if the majority of us agree with you, we've mm -hmm. got to then have something very specific that mm -hmm. is in the charter that, that that addresses the points that they've made in a world of ever changing technology and ever more data. I'm not sure I agree with. You. I think it's better to be vague. I think it's better to be vague in that we would agree that the city has a responsibility to the citizenry to um, provide uh, 
data in a way that's accessible to the citizens. And um, that's it's just a sentence. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't think Alan would agree with me either, but I think well, they, their point is made, and I think. Okay, I, 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 I know. We were just looking up things that were in this book. I asked Molly to look it up and to Google a few things, and we couldn't find the things that we were finding in the. Uh, okay. The All right. Book. So <laughs> I, I, now I understand your your position yeah. is that it may have to be fake. Mm -hmm. What you said. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, one last, uh, one last, uh, wrap it up. You'll, you'll notice in the charter that we don't have aspirational statements. And that's an aspirational statement. Um, that vagueness, unfortunately, you can use to your advantage by saying we made it accessible. Mm -hmm. Because accessibility is in the mind of the, you know, whoever's. Accessibility. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I don't think that answers the problem or addresses the problem as, as it's been described. Um, and I think, you know, in, there has to be a lot of work plowing the field before we get there, but I do think that's something that's better done through an order. Um, and by the way, the legislative, the weak council yeah. makes laws. We make laws. That's not all. I mean, it's, so it's an unfortunate. You, yes, exactly. It's an unfortunate description of a structure, strong mm -hmm. mayor, weak council, because it automatically implies that the council is just sort of a, a you know, re, you know, residual tail or something. We we actually have the authority to make laws, and we this is usually the point of conflict with the executive and the legislative branch when we start making laws dictating certain policies, but. In this case, I mean, and some other cases, it, 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 it's, it's, it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. To make the law, we can't be that vague. Mm -hmm. We have to be more precise as well. And that, <clears throat> and to Stan's point, because at, at part of this comes that we're time in flux, as Fred has noted, that <laughs> the software changes, the website changes, and so on and so forth. Uh, whereas the format, this 1925 looks just like 1949, right? Same color. And then there was a certain consistency. But as we know, these things, these systems change regularly. And then plus there are also competing systems, web developers, algorithm designers, everyone, it all changes. So to be, as Sam said, prescriptive at this point is premature. We understand the problem. The problem's been fine. It's been laid out to us. And in fact, it's not a unique problem. It's been ever so. Um, I would bet there were people who were good access in 1925 who were frustrated with some of the information they couldn't find either. But there hopefully will come a way and a process by which it's, it's a little more solid, a little, little less vague, and allows us to create a law that would actually dictate how how uh, how these this information will be accumulated, archived, and made accessible. The information is not hiding. This information isn't hiding. Oh, not here. The, I just, no, no. But just that's what I'm saying. No, I mean part part of the problem <laughs> is is that the information Sorry. is available. It's how to get to it, and that's all. That's one of the major flaws in communication. You, you, have a, you have the transmitter who sends the message, you have the noise in between, and then you have the receivers who are supposed to hear it. And we aren't getting to the, the third level of that formula. And that's a very serious problem. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the language to put it in, the, or the technology or the means at this point to actually embed it in a charter. Because to aspire, to say we want to provide or we shall provide the best access to information that we can, that's an aspirational thing. These things are more very solid as to you know the hard edges, you know the black and white lines. So. All right, thanks, Bill. Um, I think uh, we all had a chance to speak about this. I think there are varying uh, sort of opinions. Um, I think we need to let it settle. I think in particular, Lynn over there was taking it all in, and yeah. uh, perhaps she'd like to digest it for a bit and maybe um, discuss it with the mayor and, and see if any other thoughts kind of 
merge. And that we'll take up at our next meeting um, the a decision about whether we're going to attempt to write something into the charter or whether we're going to leave it to administrative order. And we could address that in our in our report to the city council that we believe this is something we believe strongly this is something that the council needs to uh, needs to take up. Okay. May I just throw out a comment? If we're already doing an annual report that has to go to the state, a, a, a way to start, a pragmatic way, is to have it available in print in one of our, in both of our public libraries. Well, Lynn, Lynn just said that they print, the city the, prints the, 20 copies. The term annual report is used to also, it's what our operating budget is. So right. yes, that's available already at the library, but I'm hearing that we want that's more than not. Budget. Yes. Yeah. So, sure. um, but one other um, now it's escaping me. One other thing I that just um, I just thought of, um, but I've lost it. Sorry. Okay. All right. So Thank we're going to resume our discussion uh, at our next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, that was a robust discussion. <laughs> um, Molly, I know you, you're going to leave. Yeah. Um, can you, before you leave, can you, um, is there anything to update us on the uh, underrepresented uh, community, subcommittee? Do you have a next step plan in terms of our outreach? So, uh, we talked a little bit, and um, we think that we learned a lot about how we, how we should operate in the future. And we think we learned a lot about, um, through the report that was done by the city, which we both are aware of, and we think there were lots of recommendations there that probably could be enacted. And um, I think that would be useful in the future. And, um, but we, have, we don't have a report as a committee. Okay. All right, we had some discussion about trying to, to um, go out into the community and have a meeting that would be more accessible, we hope, to people who you know, can't come on a Tuesday night here. Is, is that something that, that have, you, have you thought more about that? I thought that's what the committee was tasked with after the last time you guys reported that you were going to do outreach. I don't know if I would confirm that we were going to do outreach. I know that we sort of discussed some recommendations. I think the concern um, was sort of all along that, at least from my vantage point, that we were going to present some information and we were certainly going to hear the perspective of the gentleman who came in and shared a little bit more about the uh, report. Thank right. you, Wayne. Yes. Um, as I shared with Stan early on and, and with the subcommittee, um, this has sort of been about gauging the interest and the commitment of the group because you know we are all on tight bandwidth. And as I shared, I certainly don't have the bandwidth and the time to sort of take on um, both the sharing of the information as well as the implementation of that. And if there wasn't strong enough interest from the committee to take on the implementation piece so it doesn't fall on one particular person, then I'm not sure how much of the recommendations we could execute. So um, to that end, it doesn't seem from the committee, the larger committee the unit itself, that there is a strong and huge interest and commitment to execute on some of the recommendations. So you know, what I can say is um, Patty and I can put our heads together and try to figure out between the two of us what some of the recommendations we might um, be able to do if there were more people who were sort of interested in taking on one or two pieces of that you know maybe we can move forward but I put that out you know to the group I think um, just because I've sort of been nominated as chair it's been like well what have you kind of been able to do personally and I always have shared in the beginning I personally am going to be limited we haven't even had a chance to make another subcommittee meeting since the last report. That's how tight we are in time. Well, there are two specific ideas that, that I mean, there were a number of ideas, two very specific ones that I thought there was interest in. One was the possibility of doing some cabling at Grow Food um, events or other, others Grow Food mentioned, 
specifically. And one was contacting someone like Mary Cowie to see whether we might um, organize some kind of a community meeting at, at Jackson Street. For right. Example. I agree with you. I think there were, there was, were some interesting recommendations that were made and some interest there. Um, can, can we review the minutes from that meeting? What was I, I, yeah. I, I was under the understanding that you were out doing outreach because you had listed, you both listed different groups, mm -hmm. and then I suggested Mary Academy and you said, okay. And I was under the impression that you were doing outreach to these communities. We didn't do that, but I did talk to people at um, Pioneer Valley and Murphy Center a couple of times. They did get back to me, and there uh, we, I did have discussions. It's just they so they have a lot of interest in a lot of things, but it's just not on their agenda. And they get back to me and say, "Yeah, we want we want to do this," you know, the, the organizers. But um, you know, I, if I personally think that um, it's it would have taken a lot of effort on my part to refocus the, the agenda of, um, you know, what was really so sort of low on, on their agenda. It, was, it didn't make sense for me to go in and do that. So, but no, we didn't, I didn't follow up with other people. We, there was a newspaper we talked about, and because um, you had given us information, I think. I think, would, I think it would be productive to review the recommendations. I think the Mary Cowie I remember, and then sort of in this, Brief conversation that we have here really sort of see what bandwidth either we have or other people have to follow up on some of the recommendations that have been made. We can say that those particular outreach clearly both Patty and I haven't personally been able to do. I think they are good suggestions along with another that was made of reaching out um, to the, I don't know if he was the publisher, but of the Spanish speaking newspaper. That was another good recommendation. What I am sharing with you in a very I'll just be totally upfront, like I am limited in what more I can do outside this committee in terms of the specific implementations, but I am happy um, to discuss further with this committee whether folks can, um, you know, take on one or two or tabling or reaching out to this person, particularly if you have a relationship with them. Um, sorry. So, I, I couple things. One, I'm coming back to now the second meeting in September. Mm -hmm. My concern is that if this outreach starts now, we're gonna, and these people decide, yes, this is something I really wanna be involved with and I have time now. We're gonna invite them to this meeting, and then we're gonna say, oh, wow, I'm sorry, we're wrapping up. That feels even worse than saying, this is a topic that needs its own time and group to address, bigger than this, this table here. Um, and I thought, I think I maybe mentioned this before, adding it as a you know a note in the report saying we struggled with this, we feel like it's really important. We didn't have we make a request to the council that they form a special committee or support something to, to look at this. Um, because I, I think it's really important. I don't think any of us know how to address it specifically right now, and I would hate to make special outreach to very specific groups and bring them in and then have them start talking about it and go back to their constituency and then have them come back and I'll say, I'm sorry, we're out of time. That just doesn't feel great, but we are getting close to being out of time. I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. And I th that's why I felt during the summer that it was okay, you know, I could do a little bit, but it, um, but it was, you know, people weren't gonna be able to, that I talked to weren't gonna be able to be participate and then it wasn't something I was gonna be able to pursue in another way. But I think it was a worthwhile discussion. I feel like I learned about the city's, um, you know, study and the commitment that the city put into, to doing just that. And I think that, you know, actions on, on that study, um, were necessarily pursued for a million reasons, right. I'm sure. And that Money, could be a great jump off point. Yeah, and I think part of it, take it. But it was, you know, something that was raised, and it wasn't something that, I mean, I think a lot of you just stop, maybe recognize that there was like mid summer when we started talking about it too. Was, no. no, what was it earlier? I think oh, it was June. June. We started, so, this, oh, early started summer. focusing yeah. on June. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was, but I think, you know, you know, we, I think each time we've said, you know, that we haven't done anything else and that we 
Well, I think we said we're limited as two people. I mean, as we were sharing, this is an extensive piece. And I just want to, Sam, is there a particular? I've, I've been, yeah, I've been wanting to speak. Um, because I've seen you and Bill exchanged glances, and I'd rather you guys just. I know, I've had my hand yeah, up several times. So I find it disappointing because we did have action such that came out of two meetings ago, including I had brought up, I think we're going back to what Stan's original proposal was that was months ago to hold a meeting outside of City Hall. Um, and I, I'm disappointed that we've wasted a lot of time because as Lynn said, if we do this now, we've already dis discussed making a report. So it's it's just disappointing to me that we had, I'm not saying a solution that addressed everything, but we had something, and I'll say it again, I, I didn't want perfection to stand in the way of, of anything, doing some kind of progress, which I thought we were in agreement that we would hold a meeting elsewhere. And I, I, I'm understanding that you didn't understand that that was the same understanding that I have, that we had left that meeting um, I, I remember you saying, oh, Mary Callie, I didn't know who she was. You'd reach out to her. But I, I think that it's great to have the discussion. Um, it's a bummer that something that was a simple, albeit not all-inclusive solution that was brought up months ago couldn't have been enacted. I think it was a soft proposal. What I remember is that particular proposal that we need to point to. It was a soft proposal. I remember thinking, oh, it's a good idea, but I don't remember it in my mind at all thinking that I was going to go out and find a place for like, it, it, it wasn't like a, you know, a, a lot of interest in doing that. I think it should, we should have raised it in the beginning and we didn't, you know, and I, I'm not worried about going forward. I think what happened was that we, we tried to do something, it didn't work. Um, the report is that we, it was raised, and that we should do better next time. And I don't think we should be focusing a lot of energy on like hammering each other about that. I'm not focusing on hammering, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. There are a lot of view statements, a lot of, and there is a sort of, uh, a kind of shame. Well, no, no. Uh, there's a shaming element to it no. that I just want to call in. I am disappointed. I feel like there has been time wasted. There's a, I want to acknowledge that there's a real judgment piece and I'm not sure how helpful that right, is. Right, let's see what we think. Okay, so. Well, may I then, if Sam yes, is done, then I want to sort of continue and I apologize for interrupting, but I didn't have the chance actually to respond to the piece before. And, um, you know, from the beginning, look, we're volunteering our time here and we are two people. We've had subcommittee meetings that were posted. You know, it's been me and Patty attending them. If folks were really invested in following through on a particular initiative, I've been very clear and transparent with Stan that I'm not sure we had a phone conversation about this. I have the bandwidth or even should be the face of this. But if other folks wanted to be helpful, folks could have come to those meetings and sort of said, hey, hearing your piece on the bandwidth piece, I can take on the Mary Cowley piece, I can take on whatever. I'm not sure how helpful it is to sort of state in a public way, unless the purpose is really to berate and to shame, that you know you are disappointed and you feel that it's a time waste. I'm just not, a, I'm not sure what purpose that serves going forward, except to make people just feel bad. And the purpose of this is to be inclusive and make sure that we're getting out there. And these are our real limitations as kind of humans that I've, we've tried to been expressed, we've expressed to each other in the subcommittee, et cetera. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, I, I just want to acknowledge that piece because we've been coming forward wanting, I think our intent has been in the right place. We've had good intent. And from the very beginning, I'll just share with you from my perspective, the feedback both from this group and behind the scenes have been really targeted and really negative rather than how can we help? You know, what's the intent here? What are your limitations? Where can we put forward? It's pin, you know, here's how you've done this wrong. Here's how you need to sort of go about this forward. Here's how I'm disappointed, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just, I'm letting you know, I'm not finding that particularly helpful. And I am taking up this space to really 
stick up for myself because here we are being recorded and I'm not willing to be kind of a doormat for this. Stan asked me to do this. I said, I'll do what I can. Here are my limitations. You know, Patty and, you know, Bill sat together and they said, I vote for you. And I said, are you sure? Because here's what I'm concerned about. And then ever since then, it's, you know, you're not doing enough and we don't have time and it's not in the charter. So I got to say, Sam, it hasn't been, hit, that, that feedback hasn't been particularly helpful. And I would appreciate it if the tone and tenor came from a place of assuming best intent rather than um, this sort of narrative of shame and you've done this wrong. I'm just, I'm not going to accept that. I'm volunteering my time here. And I've always, and I've shared this with you, open to hearing feedback, but the how is important to me. So if the end result is just to sort of create more division and more alienation, I'm not sure it's A, embodying the inclusivity piece, which is why we're here, and B, you know, we want to be working together on this, right? Are you, I just want to make sure you're hearing that piece, and I apologize for interrupting you, but I want to say that that didn't really work for me either, and I hope you're able to hear that. Yes, we want to be inclusive, and we want to be constructive, yeah. and we want to be positive. And just for the record, um, you, had, you had your subcommittee met twice. I believe Bill was at the first meeting in July, and then you and Patty met together here in August. Bill was away, Bill was not at either of those, at either your subcommittee meeting or the larger committee meeting. So I- And then there were meetings in between. Just, we had an off schedule through the summer as well. Sure. As the no 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 not uh, the charter review committee didn't meet as frequently as every other week is, oh, is what I'm sharing this summer. Okay. Okay. Um, so I believe we met whenever, with the exception of this meeting, which actually we did meet, and the meeting last meeting we met at every available meeting. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Could. I'm just I'm just pointing out that you said you and Pat Bill was right. at that first meeting. Bill was not here in August for either the subcommittee meeting or the. <clears throat> this, or um, anyone else, for that matter, who is welcome to come since it's been public. Yes, yes. I feel the response, Molly, from my standpoint, has been positive and supportive to the points that you address, to our efforts to uh, to think about ways that we can be more inclusive in involving the community, and particularly those people who are not not represented. And I, I would. Um, I, I, I'm concerned as Lynn is about our nearing the end of the process, but I'm, just, I'm not convinced that we still couldn't take a meeting off out of City Hall and, and go out in, into the community and, and try to engage people that we haven't yet heard from. And I'm certainly willing to work to make that happen. Um, but I agree with Lynn that it needs to happen certainly by mid-October. So one idea could be, yes. if we do that meeting, is to be completely upfront and say, we're near, we're closing in on the end here. And yes. one of our recommendations may be, or will likely be, that this gets further studied next year. Are you interested in being included in that? So that we already have a, a group of people that may be <clears throat> willing to just pick this up and run with it. I'm also trying to stay positive here thinking that presidential primary march, it's going to get a lot of interest and in, that's what we saw the last time when they did this um, energizing democracy. Mm -hmm. That was you know, some of that was a direct result of the election and people wanting to get involved and globally involved in a lot easier than higher. Um, so I'm hopeful that that may mean more people are paying attention and want to get involved and we can broaden you know, the people at the table. Um, but I, I just will be careful if we're going to go out and hold a meeting that we're very upfront with people that our committee is only in existence until the end of December. Right. Yes, Bill. Um, I think when this conversation first came up, one of the things that I suggested was that um, trying to do it in the context of trying to complete before the, the charge of us committee, that as reference what Lynn just said that we continue to move towards a process of more inclusion and involvement. This is charter review, a generic overview and review of the entire charter. 
but any charter issues that come up during the time, in between times, can still qualify for petition for change. It doesn't, we don't, the next, this isn't a drop dead <coughs> deadline where we come up with a charter change and then nothing happens for another 10 years. That if there, if we can actually be more conscientious, uh, with better energy to apply and more resources to apply to actually do the outreach and continue to do the outreach. As issues present themselves, we have an opportunity to change. We have, we have the, as a community and as a council, we can petition the legislature for any changes that might be identified during the course of that time. So we're not, this isn't the end. It's not, uh, it was an ambitious goal, by and large, given the fact is, at least as it was defined and laid out to us, that we were very limited in our, first of all, our ability simply by our, our status, that uh, we weren't going to be the optimal people to do access. And that as the problem was presented, there were other subsequent problems that were also presented that actually disqualified us from actually pursuing it. So, it was, there was a inborn frustration that came from that. Mm -hmm. And and that's played out, and it's played out, and it's, so I think, I like Lynn's proposal. I think, you know, Jackson Street or JFK, if we could have a meeting there, um, with some outreach to, in principally I would, I would focus on communities that haven't heard from us recently, or if at all, is uh, Meadowbrook, Hampshire Heights, Florence Heights. Um, and, you know, even for, we can forward stuff to Mary Cowley and ask if she can also uh, disseminate it. We can do Pioneer Valley Workers, at least at that point, they, I'm sure they would have no problem sharing the information. They might all but, show up. <laughs> uh, they, they may show up, but, uh, um, and, and hopefully we learn something from that. Mm -hmm. And or hopefully some ideas are presented that how we can go forward and better access communities that have not been uh, principally involved in this conversation. But I do like still like to point out that not many of members of the community period have been engaged. So that same kind of disinterest is probably reflected in many other communities as, as you know, as Patty said, Pioneer Valley workers weren't, you know, this wasn't top hit on their uh, their consideration, and and you know, I understand that. So we're not done, only insofar as we are doing what we're supposed to do, what we're charged with doing as a committee. And I do so. If we do have a shot, we can do Jackson Street or JFK. Then we can do. Then we can make our case there. I don't think it's a panacea. I suspect they probably won't be very well attended, and I can understand why. But. It's, it's an effort, and we don't, we have to, at the very least, make a minimal effort, which is about what we've made so far. I'm not, I'm not opposed to certainly having a meeting at Jackson Street. <coughs> I'm sure it's advertised in the area, and I mean, I think it's, it, we just have to announce it ahead of time, right? And then. I yeah, we just yeah. pick the, well, we have to book the location. Book it, yeah, uh, yeah I don't mean to simplify it so much because the ones yeah. can't get through some of this stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know, I mean, I think, I think the question would be, do you have the bandwidth to um, sort of do that outreach? Just to just to be clear, for the record, because I don't, think I don't let me just, let me just, <laughs> okay, and that would be great, and mm -hmm. whatever else has been recommended that the, you know, the committee would like to go see forward. But I think at this point, to make my own engagement and involvement clear i am not comfortable being involved at this point going forward the experience for me has just been too negative both here and sort of privately i have felt it's just i want to i want to take myself out of the equation on this i really do um and i feel like the response from folks here with regard to the disappointment and the waste, et cetera, as I referred to earlier, is just really confirmed for me how much I really don't want to be part of this, and I hope that can be heard. Um, it just, I, that's, this is not what I signed up for, is to feel bullied 
by this committee in terms of my capacity and how it's just, no, I'm not up for it. And I'm making those boundaries clear. All right, okay, I, I understand. And I'm sorry that you feel that you've been bullied. I, I... Oh, I mean, I'm not even talking about what the conversation here, you know, things that have happened outside the perimeters of this committee and I, like on the intent is there, and I think every it would just have been nice to assume the best intent, recognizing what Lynn Woodfield have said that we're you know there's always going to be a limitation to um, our capacity, even if every single person was like I can do this, I can do that, and etc. Just because we are a small group of people, so it would be nice to just recognize hey, people's groups are in the right places, but we are limited. And there should not be room for her. a conversation that's. I'm sure for all of you, you're like, what is happening and what's going on and what is this emotional stuff? But I'm letting you know that this has not been an okay experience for me. And I'm taking myself out of the equation for it. Okay. I, I appreciate your expressing yourself. And I, I'm sorry that it's been as difficult as you are describing. I apologize um, for myself for not taking steps to be more supportive of you. No, Stan, I actually felt like you have been very supportive. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Now, well, I know that you had told me you wanted to <laughs> No, I have to. I'm supposed to collect vote counts. I delegated right. that responsibility to my husband. He's at JFK. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so okay. I have a little bit more time, and I just wanted to have some closure to the conversation, if that were helpful. So I do have just a bit of flexibility. Okay. Can we check uh, Lynn on the availability of, of, of Jackson Street School? For the next meeting? Well, that's uh, the <laughs> It's either October, I mean, if, if we haven't had our, our regularly scheduled time, it would be October 1st or October 15th. Um, uh, but again, I'm not sure that our regularly scheduled time is the best time to, to try, try to draw other people who, who haven't been heard from. Well, the, the reason we usually choose around 6.31 is not for the most part for public is to provide an opportunity for people who have children in school, people who have jobs, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no one ideal time, but this is the closest you can come for uh, for public meetings. Uh, the, the city used to actually hold meetings at 8 o'clock in the morning, sometimes at 3 in the afternoon, and those were always poorly attended. I think our best shot is staying with our regular time at 6.30. And, uh, and, you know, yeah. it goes on for, Couple hours, so there's an opportunity during the course of that time to come in. Um, but I do that. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that's the best we can offer. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you check in to see about the availability for October one or October fifteenth, six thirty? Because if uh, we get to another night, um, it was difficult for some committee members to be available. Okay. Any other night other than Tuesday. And this will be our regular meeting. Yep. Yeah. And are you wanting? Let's see, because we don't meet again. So if it's October first, we won't be meeting again. Is there a desire to print the charter in Spanish and have it posted at um, Hampshire Heights, or like I, what is, what are we doing for this meeting that's different than our general meetings? I guess are we still trying to do something like that? Or um, is this just like, is this our regular meeting? We're just doing it in an alternate location, or do you want me to print the agenda in Spanish and post it at um, Hampshire Heights or Meadowbrook? Or uh, yeah, let, let's. I'm uh, struggling with what yeah, is different. Yeah, yes, I know. Let's, let's aim for. Let's see if it's available. Uh, the school's available October. And that'll give us a little more time to um, work on the specifics about what kind of outreach would be. So I'm not sure that 
putting the charter is going to be so useful, but we might want to make some uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, something from us available in Spanish. Yeah, Bob. Um, I might suggest having spoken to at least one candidate um, who expressed great interest in knowing what our recommendations are. Um, I, as a voter, would love to know what council candidates feel about our major recommendations, given that there's going to be so many new councilors, given that we've got some fairly weighty items here. Perhaps October 15th would be an opportunity um, to present them to candidates, give candidates an opportunity to respond if they wish, and perhaps those candidates would then bring uh, people to the meeting. Because if we just, you know, if we just do, if we just do an ordinary meeting with ordinary outreach, we'll get ordinary results. But if we do something special and publicize it in Spanish and English see how we can distribute it. It might be an opportunity to to accomplish two goals with mm -hmm. one meeting. Mm -hmm. Could we send a press release of some sort to uh, Manuel Ramos, Ramos of El Sol Latina? Also, it's an uh, NPR show, but I think it's, he writes for Republican, but no equivalent for the Gazette at this point, but maybe, and I think any, we got contact info from uh, Dusty Christensen. What's that? Name, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if we just send something that the, the city council is considering, and, and emphasize the fact that we're actually trying to give as much inclusive uh, mm -hmm. input that might not be action points, mm -hmm. but at least he helps us going forward. All right, so Bob, you're suggesting that we um, uh, sort of wrap two things into one meeting. Right? You're I suggesting think. that we send to the candidates a summary of our major recommendations. And this is all the candidates for city council or all the candidates on the ballot in November? Yeah. Okay. And invite them to this meeting on October 15th. Absolutely. And, um, and then also um, we would do some outreach uh, to other communities and meet the candidates. Well, Bill, um, yeah, that's a lot more work. <laughs> well, 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 How okay. about if they can do a, their three minutes on the charter? Yeah, they don't have to talk at all. I mean, mm -hmm. they can just, you know, mm -hmm. join the candidates to hear what the, the the Charter Review Committee is going to recommend it, which is going to be acted upon by the new council. Mm -hmm. To me, that's a very compelling thing. Mm -hmm. and, well, yeah. well I, I would hesitate, though, to Bob to do it as a meet candidate. Fine. No, I think, that, I think that's that. that are going to be at a panel sort of discussing this. There's, there are a number of candidates panels already. Yes. One was on environment yes. and the other. Yes. Um, now, the candidates I've spoken to seem to think that this was a worthy topic, but um, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that we try to accomplish two things as well. Okay. So we don't want to scare them into thinking yeah. we're going to grill them on the charter. Certainly. <laughs> no, I right. Right. I won't show up. Right. Nor, nor, nor have an opportunity to. Don't be prepared to speak on all points of the charter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I, I actually, I think that's a, that, that makes sense. There's right. a meeting here at the city council. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna Lynn, you'll you'll check on the availability of uh, Jackson Street, mm -hmm. October fifteenth, yes. and then we'll discuss the mechanism. If that school is available, then we'll discuss the mechanism of inviting the candidates who are on the ballot to that meeting, doing some outreach, and distributing uh, a summary of our major recommendations in uh, multilingual. Now, is it is it possible for the, the mayor's office to, to do that? Could you produce? A, a, um, a, 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 so the charter is already translatable, or yeah. you can do that, I think. 
and I'm sure it probably just print it once I send it to the language. Yeah. Um, but the current Google Doc with these recommendations, like with our, you know, this highlighted information, yes. um, I don't know if I can translate that. Okay. I, uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I do think if we're, I wouldn't directly send this to the candidates. I think that if we're providing it to some people, it should, there should be a link on the agenda for everyone to see it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. my, my question is more, can we get it into Spanish for um, starters? With the recommendation, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I know the charter itself, as it sits on the website okay. right now, yes. Okay. But with our highlighted um, you know, the notes and that highlighted um, suggested mm -hmm. changes, I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right, but you, uh, you can. I'll find check out. out. That. Yep, I'll okay. find out. I'll let you know about that. Okay. Um, once Great. we have a meeting date, you know, between Annie and I, one of us can come up with a flyer for the meeting. Yes. And then I would have Annie send it out to you to get feedback individually, and then we could finalize it, and then we could translate that as well, and we could use that as the press release, mm -hmm. possibly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. I would take flyers as well. I think. Yeah, I think that should be yeah. definitely. Yeah, and, and I mean, several of us, any yeah. of us can take flyers yeah. to the places that we think can make it useful. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, very good. Uh, other uh, other updates, I'll just quickly go through some of this other business uh, uh, so we can get out of here by the way. Uh, Robbie could not be here tonight. She mm -hmm. did get an email. Uh, from Nancy Cheever's curriculum uh, coordinator for the Hampton School, elaborating on the, uh, the civics. Uh, remember, Robbie has had an interest mm -hmm. with the lowered vote, voting age, uh, civics education, and Nancy, I sent this to you already, and Nancy wrote that uh, we're in the beginning stages of moving over to the new standards, K-5, and we'll further than that in 6 to 8. We have written a civics course for our eighth grade, are fully implementing these standards this year. And uh, it, it goes on to say, we're working with two consultants who have done significant professional development over the summer, and we'll continue to hone our units throughout the year. Civic engagement projects will be developed by departments over the next year. So that is really good That's good informational. Uh, I asked uh, Lynn to Try it. One loose end here that we had talked about uh, some time ago. The question on, in Section 76 of an independent audit whether the date of awarding the contract not should be moved to September 15th and whether it should be a, a three year rather than a one year audit. And then you got uh, some information back from Susan. Yes. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't print it and bring it with me. Um, give me one second, and I can look at that. Um, All right. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so Susan's response um, was that the dates seem to work, but really since the city council's hired, they should be the ones to say whether it works for them. Under the current charter, they need to hire the independent auditor by September 15th for the fiscal year that we are currently in. So that means by September 15th, 2019, we need to hire the independent audit auditors to do the fiscal year 2020 audit, mm -hmm. which is about uh, one year in advance. Uh, this is That is good because it gives the independent auditor time to schedule since every community wants their audit done in September, October, November, following the close of the fiscal year on June 30th. Um, she thought that some of the um, challenge could be just that the council meets uh, less often in the summer. So that could have been why, at least originally, there was some issue with that. Um, um, but she said, that being said, if they don't want to be interviewing potential auditors in July and August for September 15th hire date, they could consider pushing the hire date to November 1st. That, sh that shouldn't make it any harder to schedule an independent auditor and may provide council with more time to conduct interviews in September and October, uh, and then vote by November 1st. This way they can avoid having to do it over the summer. Um, but she did say that they should not go any later than November 1st to hire an auditor for the current fiscal year. Any later than that may jeopardize getting the audit done in the months following the end of the fiscal year, 
which would be problematic for many things, say the tax rate and free cash certified bond agent, et etc. So, okay. Um, Thanks. So she she's really putting it back in the city council's uh, yeah. court. Bill, what is the uh, what do you think is the, uh, is, is there a uh, sort of consensus among the councilors about whether the stage needs to be changed? The council's never. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not aware of any discussion about the date changes, or, and I, I honestly don't think it would be an imposition on the council. Other than, I mean, regardless of when, what the schedule is, if we're going to, the, the biggest debate is well, where are we going to find another auditor to, <laughs> to interview? We basically got a choice of two. But um, so I don't think that date is, whatever it's changed to, is presents as a, any more difficult than any others, then I mean, that really is kind of an important thing that we do. And I think to do it in a more timely fashion makes more sense. Just to, 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 the council hasn't discussed the principle because the council wasn't aware of all the pressures that were associated and didn't consider it, of course. Um, so, but again, you know, me speaking for the whole council makes me well, somebody, I mean, I, I for, frankly forgot the, uh, the impetus for this. But somebody, uh, early in the process here, the notes in the Google Doc said we should consider the possibility of a longer time track, like three years, and changing the award date to earlier in the year rather than pushing it, pushing it back. But if there's no, uh, uh, you know, if there's no uh, strong feeling on the council this needs to be done, then we'll, we'll leave it in change. Yeah, I mean, I would only base it on the debates and discussions we've had about hiring an auditor, mm -hmm. and that, the last one we had about that was about four years ago, maybe, it was with Councilor Adams mm -hmm. and Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels, among others, who were proposing that we consider a new, uh, a new auditor for new eyes. Um, mm -hmm. And we did a series of interviews, but that was the only time that had ever been discussed, and so the three-year contract is, I, I remember that being discussed here, and that actually makes good sense, I think. Beyond that, no one argues that we shouldn't have fresh eyes on, on uh, if the opportunity presents itself with, a, with an agency that's, that's good and competent. Um, so one, no, I have no problem with the making the date earlier. In fact, actually, we could do it during the summer, although um, there will be a big gap between the two votes. But that's not that's not here. Or there. They, they're not even going to start to work until the right. following July. Right. So I mean, I, I don't. So they should be available. We actually know Scanlon pretty well. We the well, except we'll have a whole new council who's not going to know Scanlon at all. So um, yeah, I, I'd say. I, I don't think there's any problem with pushing the date sooner. And then at the same time, uh, the three year contract makes sense. It's, it, it also actually facilitates the process. So, but that's me speaking for me. <laughs> well, did you, uh, did you argue for a three year contract? Okay. okay. I mean, it makes a lot of sense that the, the procurement code allows it. And what we used to do was to, it was an annual contract with two optional renewals. And, mm -hmm. and if you, you know, if you, if you, if you wanted to fire the guy after year one, yeah. there had to be a real good reason. Mm -hmm. right. right. And you, you gave 90 days notice and, and all the rest. So it works, but it just, it's really a, it's really a convenience to the departments mm -hmm. and, and the finance staff to not have to reorient an auditor every year. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what would be a, a reasonable earlier date? June 30th? June 30th seems fine to me at that point. Yeah, <laughs> the fiscal year is certainly okay. previous. All right, yeah. so uh, then I would suggest uh, that we amend this to read the award of a three year contract to audit shall be made by the city council on or before June 30th. On uh, the current fiscal year? Uh, of the of the existing fiscal year. Of the existing, or the current fiscal year. Right. The current fiscal year. 
Say that again. So award by June thirtieth. A three-year contract by June thirtieth of the existing fiscal year. I, I'm sorry, the current fiscal year. For the, so, for the next year as well. Yeah. Well, you, you're awarding before, so you know, hypothetically, before June of, of 19, before June 30 of 19, you're awarding the contract for the audit for fiscal year 20, which commences so July 1. The yeah. only thing I can see possibly being an issue is the very first year, the money wouldn't have been appropriated yet or budgeted yet for that contract. So you actually couldn't award it because right. the money's not there yet yes the, the so to, to that first that. year yeah mm -hmm. after that i think you could budget for it i don't i don't it would it could be a challenge yeah is it something you could ask Susan? yeah let's see what she thinks about but, that by June 30th of any year, you have an approved budget for the next year. Yes. Yes. And so that approved budget for the next year is going to have an audit line item. Yes. And it's money that will be paid during the next fiscal year. Correct. But, yes, so right now the contract's annual. It's annual. It's a council budget line item, actually. It's the, it's the only money that. So we can spell out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let me, let me. All right, uh, make sure that that works, uh, yeah. please, Lynn, yeah. financially, and um, and then we'll take a final vote on that in October. Okay, uh, one of the things that Sam did in, in um, reviewing the Google Doc was to look for any uh, gender gender biased language. She found one chairman, uh, which, uh, can you point us to that? Uh, Where are we at right now? We're on updates from committee oh. members. Item three. Uh, can you point us to that one chairman? It's in yeah. section 10-7, I believe. Uh, Sam, you Special meetings of any multiple member body shall be held on the call of the chairman or by a majority of the members of the body. And should I make a motion? Yes, please. Um, I make a motion to amend it so it's chair instead of chairman. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I believe that was the only was it? Uh -huh. chairman of the defense, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, so that, um, that oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Annie, you need to call the roll on that. Um, Lynn Simmons? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Sam Hopper? Yes. Bob Owens? Yes. Patty Wheeler? Billy Gaffney? Yes. What about our chair? Stop. Sam. Our chair. The chair votes yes. <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone else have any uh, updates on any other topics that are not on the agenda today? Okay. Uh, now, the next item uh, is to uh, specify in uh, Section 5.3, what kind of the office Bill in Section 5 5, Community Preservation Committee, um, the, the specifics of how vacancies on either of those, in the case of the elector, that, that person or the body of Community Preservation Committee, would be filled. Right now, there is a reference to, in both cases, vacancies shall be filled in a like manner of the city clerk vacancy. We recommended that the clerk no longer be an elected. Official uh, for that uh, city clerk vacancy would no longer apply. Uh, so there's no change in in 
what we're proposing is simply spelling out the relevant uh, language for each of these positions to make this a, a, a cleaner um, section uh, under filling uh, the uh, Is there a motion to, I think we can take those both together. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve those? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. I'm not going to read them because they're right here. Uh, Paolo, please. Lynn Simmons. Yes. Patrick Blake. Yes. Tim Hopper. Yes. Stanley Moulton. Yes. Bob Lawrence. Yes. Patty Ely. Yes. Bill Yaffe. Yes. All right. Um, one, one loose end that, um, that we had some discussion about. Uh, and I, I wanted to give uh, some more time to this uh, question of whether by recommending a lower municipal voting age, we also need to address in the charter the eligibility of, of uh, 16 and 17 year olds to run for municipal office. Uh, there was uh, concern expressed uh, about running for mayor, for example, the ability to sign contracts. And uh, I don't know that there's a similar, there would be a similar uh, concern bill in, in running for city council. We do sign, we um, sign land takings, we sign zoning laws, we sign that. Um, actually, I think the, the concern I remember principally hearing was the fact that the state wouldn't allow anyone to serve. Take a, a, you're not allowed to assume office by state law. <laughs> unless the state is prepared to change that law until you're 18. So that was that was the kind of deciding factor. On, um, I, would, I would say in accordance with state law. <coughs> because you can't serve in any elected capacity uh, for the age of 18. We thought and then we said, this isn't the first instance where we're asking the state, you know, we're doing something in contravening you know, general MGL. Um, but I think we, we believe that they weren't mutually exclusive. State law says uh, to be elected, you've got to be a voter. But you don't necessarily have to be electable to be able to vote. Meaning, meaning you got to be 18 to be elected. But we're asking, what about allowing our 16-year-olds to vote? So, you know, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive, is the way that we looked at it, and how the legislature is going to respond yeah, to it. Yeah. Um, in which case, then, yes, I think that, that the legal age of um, informed consent starts at 18. Uh, so that, that in line taking issues for the council, school committee members do hires. They also, they, <clears throat> as we've discussed here, there are responsibilities that require them to actually have legal standing to be held to account. And that, that so in that respect, should, uh, the, the electability age should probably Is that is yeah. your okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. So then I think that that would be, I mean, rather than writing the language ourselves, that would be a recommendation to include with the, um, mm -hmm. the recommendation mm -hmm. that we've got lower for the age of electability remain at 18. Does anyone disagree with that? Uh, okay, we have thoroughly discussed. Uh, I do have a question. Go ahead. Uh, uh, no. Section 8 1. Yes. Uh, preliminary elections. Of course, that becomes moot if ranked choice voting is adopted. Um, um, uh, yeah, that was a concern. I don't know. Um, I mean, it, it, keeping it in in the event that, of course, the petition fails <laughs> on that yeah. score. But 
ranked choice voting would eliminate the yes. need for preliminary election. Yes, I, I think that um, that we would make known in our recommendation for ranked choice voting that if if it in fact is adopted in Northampton, that that would eliminate the deletion of eight one. Eight one, eight two. Yeah. Eight one and eight two. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I think we want to. I think we're going to include. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Preliminaries going on tonight? Yes. Uh, it's all over. Right? It's, yeah. it's all over. Right? It's all over. Uh, <laughs> is the. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, under our eight. Uh, under elections, the remove designation candidate for re election for the names of incumbents on municipal ballots. That will go away also um, under uh, there was something that calls for the ballot. Um, sorry, I was reading it earlier today. And, uh, ballot position. I'm sorry, wait, not that. Um, Oh, um, if under a no, again, there are other references to a preliminary election in, for example, a eight four ballot position, but. Alan's of the opinion that we shouldn't try to to rewrite the entire charter yeah. uh, on, on the assumption that something's going to be adopted. That that would have to be cleaned up um, if if in fact uh, right choice voting is adopted. Yeah. But were you looking for something? No, I think I think I read it quickly and didn't. Um, yeah, yeah, and, but it doesn't actually say candidate for re-election, so um, I think what I was reading in that ballot position under 8-4, regular city election, that would also, oh, I know what it was, we would probably want to adopt those same procedures for a special election, because how else would, if it was a preliminary and we weren't saying candidate for re-election and that wasn't determining your position, um, you're talking about ballot position? Yeah, what? Oh, oh, it does say ballot position in 8 2. Okay, disregard. I think I'm just exhausted. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry to confuse everyone. <laughs> um, we, um, we had talked earlier about. Uh, uh, among other things, but something very specific, putting election ballots in multiple languages. Is that something we want to write into the charter? No. Would you specify the language? I know, I think. I think languages will change over time. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's still the prevailing language in my hand in Spanish. I'm going to be on the second one. Yeah, I think I think that it, it could be mentioned in our report when we address inclusiveness issues that this is something that needs to be considered. Uh, but I don't see it myself as a charter issue. So unless anybody feels strongly about it, otherwise. Okay. All right. So it's nine o'clock. I, I don't want to spend much time, but I do want to explain. Um, what we now have in terms of documents that will make up, uh, or that could make up, um, uh, uh, our final report. Uh, we know that we have minutes from all of our meetings. We know that we have the supporting material that has been um, sent to us uh, that will be an appendix to the meetings. We know we have the Google Doc, and I'll ask Aunt, uh, Sam, in a minute, to explain, just explain what it was that she sent to us yesterday, what, what the annotations are now. And then we have a draft of a summary, which 
Bob did the, the, uh, the bulk of that work, and I'm very appreciative of Bob yes. for putting that together. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to think about is when you've had a chance to look at all of those, is, is that, does that uh, constitute what you'd like to see in our final report? And then we'll spend some time on October 1st discussing the specifics of what you're, you're seeing in this document. Um, uh, Sam, can you can you just briefly explain the, the, the attachment that you sent us yesterday? Yes, and the one that is a copy of the charter, um, anything highlighted in orange is what I deem to be housekeeping, mm -hmm. um, and which I defined in here is just it either further clarified or what it was actually happening already. Um, but but I'm certainly open to changing things because people don't see things as housekeeping. And green is more substantive changes. And all the green ones I pulled out to all the substantive changes. I pulled out into a separate document and put into various categories, again, which are totally up for discussion. And the, the fourth one was there, ju just the house housekeeping. There are actually only two. There's two Google Docs, but mm -hmm. I attached them as PDFs. So okay. Okay. Them. All right. So you get a choice of a PDF or and a Google, Google Doc, Doc. and um, one of them is the exactly. housekeeping, and one of them is the substantive changes mm -hmm. that are provided by the mm -hmm. which which don't necessarily match up with what's in the summary report. No. That's one thing that we need to talk about. To clarify that, Stan, one of them has housekeeping and substantive changes. I thought so. Yes, the other one is just yes. the substantive okay. changes yes. with a link to the housekeeping. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, again, I appreciate the work that Sam put into that. I think that's uh, helpful as we move forward in in thinking about the best format for our report so that it will be both clear and, um, and, and effectively presented. So my suggestion is, unless people have uh, questions they want to ask, and I have comments they want to make tonight, uh, that we uh, spend some time looking at this uh, ourselves and then uh, we'll discuss it uh, October. What I wanted to do was present present the, the categories that Stan and I had discussed, but for the ultimate reader, I tried to put dates, dates when we passed the motion, and then dates when it was discussed so that if they wanted to go to the minutes, they could get get more background. Because we found that, that people did go to the old documents. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think we're well served to give them more rather than less. And then possibly if if what I've done here could just refer to the section numbers, that would then give the link to what you did and there'll be a, a pretty easy way to find it if this is what they're going to be reading. Yes. Yes, and, and again, Bob, I appreciate the, the words you're giving in uh, sort of teasing out both the dates took action as well as discussion dates. Because that is useful, I think, for people who want to do a deep dive into the work of the charter review committee. Well, it's going to be an impressive package when it gets all put together, given the testimony that we've gotten from the yes. material. Any other thoughts to me? Okay. So in terms of our meeting schedule, we will meet here as usual on October 1st. We will um, see about uh, a Jackson Street School meeting on October 15th. And then we'll assess the end. Okay? Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Aye. 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 I saw that coming. I actually saw that coming.